Usain Bolt and Mo Farah, two of the most dominant athletes who competed during the 2010s. They competed in two completely different events, but they do share one thing in common. Almost every time they stepped on a track, they won double gold at the Olympics and World Championships. Bolt in the 100 and 200, Farah in the 5,000 and 10,000. Like I said, almost every time. Bolt false started in the 100 meters at the 2011 World Championships in Daegu, while Farah won 10,000 meters silver and 5,000 meters silver at his first and last World Championship appearances, respectively. But what they also have in common is that they are the last male athletes in any events to win double gold at the World Championships or Olympics. On the women's side, we just saw it happen last year with Elaine thompson Hira's double gold in the 100 and 200 meters at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. But for the men, both Bolt and Farah won gold in the 100 and 200, as well as 5K and 10K respectively, at the 2016 Olympic Games. That's six years ago, and we have had four major championships occur since then. We have a plethora of men right now though, who all have the possibility of winning double gold at an upcoming championships. But the question we have to ask is, who would be the most likely male athlete to complete a world championship or Olympic double by winning gold medals in any two events? First, just for some context, winning double gold is very, very hard for both men and women. Really only the best of the best are able to win gold in one event, then return back to win gold in a completely different event. Those who have done it are simply the best in the world. But looking at just the men today, before now, the longest time without a double gold on the men's side was between 1988 and 1995. At the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, Carl Lewis won 100 meter and long jump gold. It wasn't until the 1995 World Championships in Gothenburg, Sweden, where Michael Johnson won the 200 and 400 meter double. But though that was seven years, so a longer time frame than it is now, there were also only three championships between then, Worlds in Tokyo 1991, Olympics in Barcelona 1992, and Worlds in Stuttgart 1993. Prior to 1991, the World Championships only occurred every four years. So the year after the Olympics, 1989, was not a world championship year, as we are of course used to it being currently. The last person to try it and really get close was Wade Van Niekerk, and even he was unable to actually do it. At the 2017 World Championships in London, Van Niekerk won the gold in the 400 meters, and then came back for the 200 meters, eventually getting the silver medal by just two hundredths of a second, losing to Ramel Guliev of Turkey. Prior to Van Niekerk, a few men had been successful at double gold. Usain Bolt and Mo Farah, of course, as I noted, both of them winning multiple double golds between 2008 and 2016. Kenenise Bekele won 5K, 10K double in both 2008 and 2009. Tyson Gay in 2007 won the 100, 200 double. Bernard Lagat, also in 2007, won the 1500, 5000 double. Justin Gatlin, 2005, he won the 100, 200 double as well as Rashid Ramiz also in 2005 won the 800-1500 double. But what about our current athletes? Well, let's take a look at a few of them. First off in the sprints, Fred Curley, 100 meter world champion, 100 meter Olympic silver medalist, dropped down from the 400 meters after winning bronze there in 2017. He made the world championship 200 meter team, but he got injured running through the rounds and was unable to make it out of the semis. He would have been a serious medal contender if healthy, but I'm not exactly sure if he would have been able to win gold ahead of Lyles. And all of the top 200 meter guys right now, Lyles, Benaric, Knighton, they are all younger than Curly, so will likely be getting faster in the event as opposed to slowing down. But Curly has a lot of untapped potential in that 200 meters, so a double in the 100 and 200 is still very possible. Maybe even in the 100, 400 or 200, 400. Definitely one to keep a lookout for. Next up, Arian Knighton. Probably the top name who most people think will win the 200 meters moving into the future. But for now, he does have to surpass Noah Lyles for 200 meter gold after we just saw Lyles break that American record in 19.31 seconds. 
On the 100 meter side of things though, Nayeon has a ton of untapped potential, but that is also a very different event. Guys like Lyles and Benaric pretty much showed that you can be amazing at one, but not as amazing at the other, and vice versa for guys like Trayvon Bramel and Christian Coleman. Nayeon will have to significantly improve his 100 meters if he looks to contend for 100, 200 double gold. And again, he's very young, so it's very possible for him to drop down and get much faster at 100 meters. Speaking of, Noah Lyles. Now, as noted, Lyles' 200 meter accolades don't necessarily translate perfectly to the 100 meters, but he is the Diamond League champion in the 100 meters from 2019. He hasn't done well in the event since then though, and with names like Curly, Bromel, Bracey, Coleman, Tobogo, there are so many guys that he'll have to get through for him to finally get the gold medal in the 100 meters. And he has guys like Knighton and Benaric right behind him in the 200 meters, so this is gonna be a tough task, but Noah Lyles is another name there. Also can't forget about Andre de Grasse. Now, though he didn't do well individually in Oregon at the World Championships, he is the reigning Olympic champion and has always won medals in the 100 and 200 meters at global championships. The same argument applies as with the other sprinters though. The events are stacked and getting gold in both the 100 and 200 would require fighting through a very deep field in both of those events. I can't leave out Michael Norman. He just won the 400 meters at the world championships, has a personal best of 19.70 in the 200 and has also run a plethora of times in the 19.8 range. But similar to what I noted for Fred Curley, the 200 meters is extremely stacked with guys who are very, very fast. If Norman dedicated himself to the sprints, he could do something special. But doing a 200-400 double, even specifically considering that the schedule almost never really lines up, plus the deep sprint fields, would be a very tough task. But Michael Norman, he is a strong contender and one to be looked out for. Grant Holloway. Now, this would be extremely interesting. Holloway has some strong options, but he would really need to improve in certain areas. He's an amazing sprinter, so could tackle the sprints like the 100, 200, but he also is very strong, so could look to the 400 or the 400 meter hurdles. He even has some NCAA accolades in the long jump, but as noted with others, this would be a tough task. His main event, the 110 meter hurdles, is already super stacked. While any other event, maybe aside from the long jump, is also very stacked and he would need to drastically improve his personal best, especially if we're talking about the hurdle double, Holloway is capable and again, is one of the best in the world. For some history, Harrison Dillard won Olympic gold in both the 100 and 110 meter hurdles, but it was at separate games back in 1948 and 1952 at the Olympic games respectively. So, if we're talking about a 110 meter hurdler venturing off into another event, not too much history to go off of except one person, but Grant Holloway is a talented athlete. Sticking with the hurdles, let's look at Rye Benjamin. Now, Rye Benjamin has a ton of untapped potential in the 400 meters. He has his speed, having run sub 20 in the 200, and his personal best is already 44.3. But Benjamin would need to break the barrier of his main event first and win gold in the 400 meter hurdles. Once healthy, he of course is a serious challenge for 400 meter hurdle gold. But is he able to improve over 400 meters to get the gold there? The better question is, will there ever even be a schedule that allows for him to complete that 400, 400 hurdle double? Unfortunately, it's probably very unlikely, but Vyar Benjamin is a very strong contender for a double gold. I can't leave out Kenny Benaric. He's the 2020 Tokyo Olympic silver medalist and 2022 World Championship silver medalist at 200 meters. He has a personal best of 19.68 seconds run at the Olympics last year, and his 400 meter personal best from 2019 is 44.73 seconds. Now, that 44.73 might not seem fast, but he has shown extremely high potential at the 400. He just hasn't run it as much since 2019. He did run an early season 400 this year of 45.37 seconds, so not very fast, but if he's able to step things up both in the 200 to potentially get gold and then maybe really dip his foot into the 400 for a serious season, we might see Kenny Benaric challenge for two gold medals. Emmanuel Career from Kenra. Now, he is the 800 meter Olympic and world champion, but he has some serious accolades in the 400 meters, especially in terms of times. 
His 400 meter personal best is 44.21 seconds from 2018. And at both the 2019 Worlds and 2020 Olympics, he attempted the 400-800 double. In Doha 2019, he actually got to the final of the 400 meters and finished in sixth place. So honestly, for career, a 400-800 double is not out of the question, though again, we really have to think about those fields are super, super deep. So those are some of the sprinters who might be potential contenders, and I'm kind of not sure we'll see a sprint double though, right? Again, those fields are super, super stacked. But who is more likely to win double gold? I'm looking at the distance guys. Jakob Ingebrigtsen from Norway, already the 2020 Olympic champion at 1500 meters, and now the 2022 world champion at 5000 meters. He was actually extremely close to double gold in Oregon before he got beat out by Jake Whiteman in that 1500 meters. Joshua Cheptegei, world record holder in both the 10K and the 5K, he won 5,000 meter gold and 10,000 meter silver in Tokyo, then recently won 10,000 meter gold in Oregon this year. He has a very, very high chance of winning double gold at an upcoming championships. It's just parsing through those distance fields. His fellow Ugandan countryman, Jacob Kiplimo, he won Olympic 5,000 meter gold and world 10,000 meter bronze. So he is definitely in that conversation. Can even note Selim Brega from Ethiopia. Brega won 10,000 meter gold at the Olympics and is a 2019 world 5,000 meter silver medalist. And there are a ton of other guys who could potentially do it as well on the distance side. But what about the other field events? I'd potentially look at Ryan Krauser. He has spoken about competing in the discus if he ever gets the chance to at a global championships. He is rock solid in the shot put though he does have some competition of course with Joe Kovas but the discus is also super stacked, but who knows who could put anything past Ryan Krauser. What about a decathlete? Maybe there's a decathlete who could win gold and then follow up in an open event such as a long jump or the javelin throw. Even another field eventer, right? Is there any athlete currently who could dip into both jumps, the long jump and the triple jump and be a serious gold medal contender? Not too long ago, Will Clay from the United States won long jump bronze and triple jump silver at the 2012 Olympic Games. Again, these are just a few names who have the potential to double and are some strong contenders for gold medals. As noted, I think we are more likely to see a distance athlete win double gold in the next couple years, just considering the fields in the sprints right now that are super, super stacked. But what do you think? Who will be the next athlete on the men's side to complete an Olympic or world championship double? Do you think it will happen at next year's world championships? Or maybe not until the Olympics in 2024? Or maybe even farther into the future? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.